Extra, extra, read all about it. Native speakers do not use adjectives anymore. Read all about it, read all about it. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Smashing English. Before we start this video, be sure to subscribe because we make new videos all the time and I don't want you to miss any. So with that said, let's get on with the video. Now, what a strange title we have for this video. How strange, how intriguing, how weird. Wait a minute, I just used three adjectives and I just told you that native speakers do not use adjectives anymore. My goodness, what is happening? Smashing English, you do not know what you're talking about. Leave, get out, never teach English again. But hold on, I have a point. Now, if you're learning English, I hope you are listening to lots and lots of native speakers speaking English, because obviously this is a great way to practice your listening, your vocabulary, everything. Now, if you are listening to people under the age of 35, you might have noticed a bit of a trend happening. It's probably easier if I just give you some examples. And then he came to my work and I was like, what are you doing? No, honestly, I saw that film and I was like, I can't, I'm too scared. And then she told me she was pregnant and I was like, what? And he walked up to me and he was like, hey, what are you doing? And she was like, ah! And he was like, get out! And I was like, huh? And she was like, yeah. Are you noticing a pattern? Yes, in the last 20 years or so, the younger generations have developed a way of speaking that sometimes neglects adjectives. Not always, but sometimes. So for example, instead of saying, I saw the film and I was terrified, you might hear people saying, I saw the film and I was like, oh my God, this is so scary. Or instead of saying, they were baffled, confused, you might hear, they were like, huh? So what is this? Okay, so we have the subject and then whatever version of to be works. So if it's past tense, it will be was or were. If it's present tense, it will be is, am, are. And then it's almost like you make little speech marks and you say what you were thinking, what you were feeling rather than the adjective. So if you are feeling like you want to say, what? You say that. So you go, I was like, what? And this is huge. I hear this all the time. I do it all the time. When I'm talking to people, I don't say, and I was really confused. I say, and I was like, huh? If you listen out for it, you will hear it everywhere, especially with native speakers. Why is this happening? I don't know. Maybe people's vocabularies are getting smaller. Maybe people are more excited to tell the emotion of a story. So they want to recreate what happened or they want to act out how they felt at the time to make the story more exciting. I don't know. Maybe it's emojis fault. You know, maybe we are so used to just putting an emoji instead of saying the adjective of how we're feeling. So maybe now we don't know how to express that when we're speaking. So instead of saying, I was flabbergasted, I was shocked, we go, and I was like, Oh, <gasps> you know, we act it out. We're like performing all the time. It's really interesting to see the evolution and to see how this is changing. If you are learning English, do you need to do this to sound like a native speaker? And the answer is no, you don't need to adopt this way of speaking. It's very casual. It's usually heard amongst the younger generations. So if you are a 60 year old man, don't worry about it. You know, you don't need to start talking like this, but just be ready to hear it and be ready to understand what that means and what they're talking about. If you want to use it, if that sounds like something you would say in your native language, yeah, do it, go for it. Start using this phrase. And don't get me wrong, you can definitely just use adjectives. Adjectives are great. We use them all the time. Native speakers do use adjectives but a lot of the time it's also being replaced with this new phrase. I was like, huh? They were like, what? And when I was thinking about this, it really got me thinking about how younger people speak. So I'm learning French and I've realized that when someone over the age of about 50 speaks French, I can understand it. I'm quite good. I know what they're saying. I can follow it. 
But when an 18 year old speaks French, I find it really tricky. So I was thinking if this is the same in English, and I think it is, and I think the reason is Sometimes because of things like this, because of slang, because of modernization of grammar and phrases like, I was like, blah, blah, blah. But also I've noticed that younger people in general, not everybody, but younger people, we are awful at finishing sentences and we are awful at completing a sentence. You know, me and my partner, Bez, we have made a listening practice video and we're going to be making a lot more listening practice videos. And in those videos, if you listen to us talking naturally, we don't finish every sentence. We start a sentence and then it sort of turns into something else and then it becomes this and it becomes this. We're not completing thoughts very often. So this might be why you're finding it really tricky to listen to native English speakers because the sentences aren't always being completed and they, they don't always have a perfect beginning, middle, end. So if you can, start watching some reality TV, you know, Sometimes it's really good. Sometimes reality TV is awful, but sometimes it's quite good. There's a TV show called The Traitors. I think there's an American version and a British version, and it's fantastic. That's reality TV. You lied to us for three days. Stop. Then you managed to lie to us for three days. Say something. Hear him out. Oh my God, man. And it's really useful because you will hear people speaking normally. They're not scripted. They haven't had a script writer, you know, form a perfect sentence that has a beginning, middle and end. They are just talking with no plan. And that is the best kind of listening practice you can do. So podcasts, not scripted podcasts, podcasts, uh, interview shows like Graham Norton or um, Stephen Colbert, those kinds of things. Reality TV, get used to hearing English in its modern form. Get used to hearing how young people use it, you know, how it's evolved, how it's changing. Otherwise you might be confused if you move to an English speaking country. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. If you would like to follow us on Instagram, you can do so there. And if you want an online English lesson with me or my partner Bez, the link for that is down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta!